canals are very interesting while in Amsterdam because it was part of their main transportation at one time. And to think that people traveled down canals on boats to get from one place to another was just fabulous. Yes, in the Smithsonian Institute, we, we saw the plane in which Charles Lindbergh flew over to Europe. I think he was uh, sort of an adventurer and he liked the daring of the flying. In a sense, you're not only touring England, but you're also meeting people of other countries and learning the things that they do in their countries. It makes it real interesting, you know, you can exchange views. We all crowded around the spacesuit. We all thought it was on a dummy. And then one of the girls was asked if she'd like to touch the glove of this dummy. And of course it came to life and we were all rather surprised at this. It, uh, it was all rather amusing. Well, um, you talk about building relationships with other uh, countries. I found that with my German friend who stayed with me for five days with my whole family, I would say he is my best friend that I've made on this trip together, and I've invited him to my house if he is in the Chicago area, and he in turn has invited me to his house if I should ever return to Germany again. Most of us, this was the longest airplane trip we'd ever taken. You know, when they named it International Air Cadet Exchange, they weren't kidding. Cadets came from all over the world, crisscrossing oceans and continents, not just for pleasure, but on a mission of goodwill. Participating nations are naturally pretty choosy about who represents them overseas. For example, only top Civil Air Patrol cadets are selected based on their character, academic achievements, leadership ability, and good citizenship. But what brought us all together in the first place was our common interest in aerospace. Some of us in our Civil Air Patrol program had already had some training in aeronautics and space science. But this tour, well, I don't know, it, it kind of brought it all together. Air Force jets, prop jobs, a missile launch pad at Vandenberg. Some got to go inside a space capsule. Well, I missed out on that one. You know, when you talk about aviation, there's a little more to it than just flying airplanes. Haven't you ever wondered how they keep them from running into each other over the big city airports? Well, we saw how that's done, too. At an air traffic control center. Really interesting. A few lucky cadets got to visit the Air Force Academy at Colorado Springs. What a place. Red carpet treatment all the way. And to top it off, a cook-on in the woods near the academy. But sooner or later, it all gets back to this people-to-people -people thing again. Just natural, I guess. I think International Air Cadet Exchange, the value to me has been the opportunity to see a foreign country, to see people, to get to meet them, to know them to actually see what other people do and see how similar people are all over the world. Having gotten to meet British, Canadians, Swedish, Germans, plus the Dutch people, we've gotten a chance to know more people around the world. This to me has been just an opportunity which I'll treasure for my whole life. The International Air Cadet Exchange's purpose is uh, to create friendship between different countries. And in our tour, I believe that we've really mastered uh, exactly what it was set up for. Because uh, as this family, we, uh, we just spoke together and acted politely to each other. And just as one of the best things you can think of that a family should be. Well, we have everything prepared. We have our transportation. It's always there. And wherever we go, we'll have our meals all prepared and everything. And it's, it's really fantastic. And everything's just coming out great. 
One of the greatest things which I know my lads are getting out of this visit to your country is the ability to uh, converse with uh, the average American, uh, listen to their points of view, discuss uh, their problems, and uh, more than anything else, I think this tour has achieved the aim of understanding between two different nations. Uh, I can envisage a uh, difficulty with parties from the uh, Malaysian, Singapore and uh, Chinese uh, groups who would have a language difficulty. Uh, but nevertheless, as far as my lads are concerned, the number one thing which has come out of our visit is uh, getting to know the uh, American person in their own home. Uh, and they have said to me on many occasions, Sir, these people are exactly the same as us. There's only one difference. They've got an accent. Oh, yeah, the language problems. It can be quite a problem for just a Puerto Rican who finds himself in Germany for three weeks. When I travel through the country and everything, here in Germany, I think of my parents and how I'd like to see them see what I've seen. And usually it's the other way around. They want you to see what they've seen. But Europe's one thing I'd really like them to see. It's really fabulous. I still can't believe I'm here. I look up at the sky and I say, it's the same sky that you see in the United States, but it's a long way away. Well, I think one thing which I hoped I showed in the way I acted, the way I behaved, the way I, my outward appearance to people in the Netherlands was to show them what not really a typical American is, but what a typical American who really wants to learn about them is. I changed a few ideas I know of because they would ask me questions about life in the United States and I gave them the honest answers, as honest as I could from my own experience. It made me think a lot about what America meant to me because I had to tell them what America was. And it was very interesting to note their reactions. I definitely see a lot of promotion of goodwill between the United States and other countries and between other countries in the United States where, well, kids from Belgium will ask, well, uh, you know, do you really have free press? We showed him a picture of something and it said something about the war. And he was shocked because they said something about the war. He said, I can't believe that you, know, you have free press. And uh, you find out more about different other countries than you would in a book, you know. The kids can tell you more about what they are. I enjoyed my trip around New York greatly, especially the boat trip around Manhattan Island. I think this was the only way we could get any idea of the great size of the buildings. We have skyscrapers in England, especially in London, but nowhere on the scale of New York. They were really terrific. Never seen anything like that before. Well, in England, it was my second time up in gliders. The other times were in Illinois. It's just one you really can't describe it until you feel it, and, and then you still have difficulty describing it, but it's a, it's a feeling that you will get doing anything else. It's a thing where you and Mother Nature come together and face each other face to face. I think, I think the most inspiring part of uh, RAF Spindlegates was standing there behind the glider as it was being towed up and just watching the glider glide into the clouds and... Uh, watching that thing just climb like no other bird or any other glider you've ever seen climb before. Uh, when I first walked into the uh, Smithsonian Institute, I first saw the, the plane the Wright brothers flew in, in 1903. What startled me most was that the Wright brothers plane, uh, it was almost like a mosquito. Uh, it's so, you know, open and behind stood, stood the spirit of St. Louis and it was covered with metal. And I, and all at once, I, I saw the difference was, was really, you know, astounding. But, but what was more astounding was the, behind that, the lunar module. Oh, the, the difference there, you, you could not measure. And not only in know-how and technological advancement, but also in the mentality of man to reach so much further beyond uh, almost imagination.